Hi, I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures, and today we are diving into Thrush versus Air Tractor. This has been probably one of our most asked questions throughout the summer since Callie and I bought this operation. Why? Well, because it came with two of these airplanes. These are late 1970s Thrush aircraft. Prior to this, I was flying a 1998 Air Tractor 502, and I'd been in that for about nine years. Now, prior to that 502, I was actually flying an airplane almost identical to this one. So let's dive into this. Let me start out with prefacing all of this with the fact that this is just my opinion. Everyone has an opinion, and if you're talking to an ag pilot about Thrush First Air Tractor, I guarantee that they also have an opinion about it. Let me also say that these airplanes are late 1970s models. The one I was flying from Air Tractor was a much newer model. These aircraft did not start out in the configuration that you currently see them in. So originally they had 400 gallon hoppers in them. Now they have 500 gallon hoppers. They also did not come with a turbine engine on it. Specifically, these are Garrett engines. They would have originally had a radial engine mounted on them. Let's start out with the power plant. So like I mentioned, these are Garrett's and they are 715 horsepower dash six. The Pratt & Whitney that was mounted on the air tractor was a dash 34 that had about 750 horsepower. Both of the airplanes were 500 gallon airplanes. So very comparable in that aspect. As far as the power plant goes, the main difference was the Pratt & Whitney is not a direct drive. So Technically speaking, when you went to start the motor on the Pratt & Whitney, someone could hold the prop as the motor spooled up. At some point, they're physically not going to be able to hang onto the prop anymore. But what I'm saying is that the propeller was literally disconnected from the other half of the engine. So those were not connected to each other. On this one, there is a direct drive shaft from the front to the back and everything is connected. This motor is a lot louder on the ground. You always have to be wearing ear protection. And then when you're wearing ear protection, you're always yelling at the other person into their ear because it's so loud. On the Pratt & Whitney, you could fully feather the prop and slow everything down. It's not nearly as loud on the ground, so it's much more pleasant when you're on the ground working around the airplane. There's no doubt about that. Once you're in the air, I don't notice any difference as far as how loud it is. Now with the power plant, you also are concerned about fuel burn. With the Pratt & Whitney, I ran that thing pretty much full forward all the time, maximum power. That would burn roughly about 57 gallons an hour. On these, I'm burning more around 50 to 54 gallons per hour. These do have slightly less fuel burn. They're a little bit more efficient. Now that Cal and I are paying for the fuel, we've got to like that. Moving back from the power plant, I already said that both of them have a 500 gallon hopper. Now the wings, the wings are drastically different and this is really where the airplanes fly different from each other. So on the Thrush, the wing is a much shorter wing compared to the 502 Air Tractor. The wingspan on this is about 47 and a half feet. On the Air Tractor 502, you're looking at about 52 feet. As far as the shape of the wing goes, this one on the Thrush is much wider. If you were to look straight down the end of the wing of the Air Tractor and then straight down the end of the wing of the Thrush, you would instantly notice that the Thrush is much wider and the Air Tractor is a lot skinnier of a wing. It's also longer. So the Air Tractor does fly a little bit faster. That's noticeable in the ferry as well as going across the field. It's probably about five to 10 miles an hour slower in the Thrush versus the Air Tractor. The Air Tractor also feels a little bit more maneuverable. Now with that said, where I really notice the Thrush is fully loaded on a hot day and it's windy out, this feels a lot more stable to me personally. So when I'm getting a little bit slow in the top of my turn and I'm bringing it around, the Thrush definitely handles that load a little bit better. 
The air tractor, I always would feel like it was kind of just wanting to fall out of the sky. I mean, you could just feel it getting a little bit soft. And you're just like, mm, I really need to kind of keep the speed up on this. I feel like I can definitely get a little bit slower in this airplane. And again, it just feels more stable in the turns. Now, one thing that I don't have on this particular one here, but on the one in the back, it has servos mounted on the ailerons. This one does not. I hate it. It is so much work to fly the airplane. So just moving the stick and turning the airplane and moving the ailerons, it takes so much effort. Also, the rudder pedals, just pushing on the rudder pedals, they're interconnected with the stick. And so when you move the stick, it actually moves the rudder pedals. And I'm kind of fighting those all day. My knees, by the end of the day, are killing me. So with that said, these are old. They have since come out with a ton of different STCs that you can add to these airplanes to make them fly a little bit better. This one needs servos. So I can't really technically say that that's a con because it's something I can fix and that one in the back does have it and it flies much more like an air tractor. It's a lot lighter on the controls, but this one, uh, I hate it, and it's something that in the future definitely needs to be corrected. Also, there are different tails that you can put on these. So this is a fabric tail, and that's what it would have come with in the 70s. Now, a newer thrush comes with a metal tail, and people do take these fabric tails off and put metal tails on. This is going down a big rabbit hole, but it's a heavier tail. Some people say they like the way that they fly, though, and they are a lot lighter on the rudder pedals even though it's a heavier tail, they think the airplane seems to fly like it's a lighter tail. So again, this is just a lot of people's opinions at this point, but you could also do a different tail. It could still be a fabric tail, and there are things you can do that would make the rudder pedals a little bit lighter and not so tiring at the end of the day. So again, there's a lot of things that I need to dive into, but for me, no servos on the ailerons. It's like I've been hit by a bus at the end of the day and I'm sick of it at this point. As I mentioned earlier, these airplanes have been modified quite a bit. One of those being that 500 gallon hopper. Now on this airplane, because it has the larger hopper that's aftermarket, it sticks up a lot higher into the windshield. So when I'm sitting on the ground, the hopper has quite a lip on it that it's sticking up into my field of view. So sitting on the ground, I can barely see out in front of me. Unless it's way out in front of me, I really can't see much. I can barely see an airplane that would be sitting 30 feet in front of me, like a small Cessna 172. I can barely see that. I can maybe catch the tail of it. It really takes up a lot of view. Now, when I'm in the air, I don't notice it. They fly with the nose low, but in a 502, it's completely flat and you actually have great visibility on the ground. So that is also uh, a slight con for this. It's just hard to see out of when you're taxing. If you're at a public airport and there's a lot of traffic on the ground, definitely need to pay extra attention because you can't really see that well. With the wingspan of this one being about 47 and a half feet and the air tractor 52 feet, you do end up having a slightly narrower swath width on this airplane. So I'm running a 60 foot swath and on the 502, I was running a 70 foot swath. So at the end of the day, you're gonna be turning less, you're gonna have less swaths throughout a field and you're gonna be able to maybe do a little bit more work or at least you didn't have to do as many turns at the end of the day, you're a little less tired. As far as maintenance goes, with these particular motors, there is an AD out for a bearing. And what this requires is every 150 hours, I have to do what's called a soap sample. So I have to pull the oil filter out and send it in as well as a sample of oil. And they analyze this and make sure that there's not any material from this bearing in the oil. And what that would do is they would maybe be able to catch the bearing failure prior to it actually failing. Because if this particular bearing failed in flight, you would have an engine failure. So it's pretty important, but I have to do it every 150 hours, which in the middle of the season, that can come up quite quickly when you're going every single day for 15 hours a day. The biggest downside to this, besides the time that it takes to do it, is it's pretty expensive. So it is an added cost. 
Also, you have to change fuel nozzles on both of these motors, the Garrett as well as the Pratt & Whitney. Now the Pratt, I was changing fuel nozzles at about 350 hours. On this one, they call for a 200 hour fuel nozzle change. So I do end up having to change the fuel nozzles on this a lot sooner than I did on the Pratt & Whitney. That also is another incurred expense that's a lot sooner and more often on this motor. All right, so you've gotten this far and you're like, okay, so which one do you prefer? Here's my answer. And it's biased because I've spent a lot of time in the air tractor. I prefer the 502. I'm more comfortable with it and I find it easier to fly. With that said, I already mentioned that there's a lot of things that I can do to this airplane to improve its flight characteristics. That's something that I definitely need to look into because again, it just wears me out flying this at the end of the day, at the end of the season. I don't know how long I can take it. So once we maybe incorporate some of these STCs and make it a little bit easier to fly, maybe a little bit more enjoyable, possibly my mind will change. I also just came out of air tractors for the last nine or 10 years right into this. The first turbine that I flew for two years was almost identical to this, except it did have servos on the ailerons. When I flew that for two years, I didn't have any complaints. I never thought once about the motor, the flight characteristics, how it hauled a load. It was just what it was. It's all I knew. And I thought it flew great. So again, maybe I'm a little biased because I've spent so much time in the air tractor. I just know it inside and out. I wore it like a glove. I'm still learning this one a little bit. It's not quite like a glove, but we're getting there, a little bit more time into it, and some modifications down the road. There is also the aspect of price. Being that these are older airplanes, they were not nearly as expensive as my 1998 air tractor that I was flying. Air tractor seems to hold its value a little bit better in the ag world. So these have been great for us because we don't have as much money into them as what we would have into a late 90s air tractor. So for that, as owner operators, it's been great for us. And we're very thankful for that side. So if we're looking at the option of buying one of these or buying a late 90s air tractor, I'm gonna choose these because as owner operators, it's what we can afford and it's what we can run and pay the bills with. An air tractor, a little bit more expensive, and I'm doing just as much work at the end of the day. It comes down to, can you pay the bills and can you make money? That's why we're doing this. And what Cal and I said is the previous owner obviously was able to pay for these. So if he was making it work, there shouldn't be any reason why we can't make it work. Again, this is just my opinion. Everyone has one. And I'll say this, I haven't flown anything newer than one of these. I haven't flown anything newer than the 1970s era thrush. They have brand new ones out there. They probably fly amazing. I've never flown one. They have different motors on them. They've gone through different phases of different manufacturers. So that's a whole nother thing because Thrush has aircraft that have the Dash 34 power plants on them. So at that point, I mean, that puts the Garrett argument completely aside. The hopper, well, they come stock with 500 gallon hoppers in them and they don't look like this where they're sticking above the windshield and whatnot. So what am I actually talking about? I don't know. They're both flying airplanes and this is what it comes down to. What can the operator fly that makes them money? That's really the argument. You need to fly something that's gonna make you money because if you're not making money, you're gonna go out of business. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Also, if you're wondering where we are or what we're up to, you've probably noticed that this was what the first video that we've published since May maybe or beginning of June. That's because we had an extremely busy season and we're super happy about that. But Callie's always publishing stuff on Instagram and Facebook. So if you wanna stay up to date on that, you can find us at Ag Aviation Adventures. Thanks again for watching guys. I'm Tyson with Ag Aviation Adventures.